and the victory parade in Cincinnati, and the people of Newport and Covington attended that. Then when Lincoln was assassinated, public assassin, public uh, ceremonies for, for Lincoln. That's it. <laughs> Yes, uh, we have a story in Erlanger that when John Hunt Morgan escaped from the Ohio Penitentiary uh, and uh, across the Ohio, that he stopped by a house in Erlanger. Uh, was that yours, house, uh, Don? Uh, that? No. Well, but I'm wondering. But I'm wondering, are uh, these stories? Do you regard them as urban legends, or have you tracked down the authentic houses that John Hunt Morgan really did stop at on his escape route? To the South? That, that's a good question, Andrew. Uh, when Morgan escaped from prison, he wanted to make his way south. The uh, newspaper said he'd gone to Canada, and there's a three thousand dollar reward on his head, but he didn't head toward Canada. He headed south on the Southern Underground Railroad, and. Uh, he and uh, Captain Tom Hines, who was with him, there were four others, and they went different directions, but Morgan and Hines came uh, around the edge of Cincinnati on the train, got off the train north of Cincinnati, and uh, walked to the riverbank and hired a boy to go across the river for 50 cents, and they had the information passed to them while they were in prison that Helen Ludlow, the wife of the ma uh, dead mayor of Ludlow, who passed away, was the first stop on the Southern Underground Connection, Southern Underground Railroad. And so they had uh, breakfast with uh, Helen, and she told them where the next stop was. And uh, uh, I think the next stop was uh, Thomas's, uh, right next to Fort Mitchell. Uh, but I don't know after that. This was a very secret activity, and to expose who, who guarded them and who protected them and fed them and kept them overnight and uh, provided horses for them would have been to get those people in trouble. It's like the Underground Railroad going north. It's a secret activity. It's a secret activity. So uh, there is a uh, about it. Uh, there is as good of a of an account at, that I've seen in uh, in the article that I wrote with uh, uh, Matthew Becker in Encyclopedia of Northern Kentucky, and it takes it step by step. And uh, Matthew's done great work on that. So I think that that's the most reliable, and I believe it does go through Verlander. I believe. So uh, that's what I refer you to, the article on John and Morgan in the uh, Encyclopedia Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned a pontoon bridge using coal barges. Do we know how wide the Ohio was at that point? That's a good question. It was not near as wide as it is now, but we have uh, the drawings and the, uh, the uh, pillars of the... Uh, of the suspension bridge or in the drawings. And so it wasn't a great deal more narrow. It was not as deep because it weren't dams yet in the Ohio River. But it was it, it was a good ways across there. And uh, uh, I don't know exactly how far, but I would judge it by that. And you can look at those drawings, which seem to be <coughs> accurate, and tell that uh, it wasn't, wasn't a great deal less wide than it is now at that point. Uh, the Ohio River was not as uh, deep as it is now, and so it may have been more shallow, but its banks don't seem to have changed that much since then. So I'd say it was roughly, judging from the way it looks, roughly as wide as it is now, but not as deep. Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned that they thought Morgan was everywhere. Does um, that mean like some of the stories about the raiders going across the Ohio into some of the southern farms in Ohio? Are those true or not true? Okay, good question. When Morgan went over into southern Indiana and southern Ohio on his great raid, where his captain been in northern Ohio, his men uh, scattered to, to find food and, and remounts and new other horses. They left their tired horse and took a an Ohio horse took her the guy into Ohio. And uh, so they moved at least five miles on each side of their route. And if you want to know where they showed up and took something, uh, look at Les Horwitz's map. Les is from Loveland and has the book Longest Raid in Civil War. And read his book and he, he tells where Morgan's men went and, 
his map shows everywhere they took something. It's, it's relying on the state records of claims that's with the Ohio and Indiana uh, state government. So it's good primary documents, dependent documents. So, uh, yes, they appeared in a lot of homes. They were gentlemen, so much so that the people kept a knife or fork that one of them used, kept a tablecloth, kept the cup, kept the saucer, kept the plate, and cherished them because this was one of Morgan's men ate out of this plate or drank from this cup. And so the idea that Morgan's men were, were terrorists or that they were impolite or pushing people around or destroying things, uh, they did destroy uh, uh, grist mills and railroad tracks, uh, economic things, economic uh, items, but uh, they did not destroy anybody's cows, sheep, which, uh, you know, the Union Army in the South after the summer of 1862 would kill nearly every sheep they could find. Cows and hams out of the meat house. Now, both armies did that pretty much. But Morgan did not do that. They said they had his men strictly under control. So a visit from Morgan's men turned out to be, even though you were afraid at first that they were going to burn your house and kill you, turned out that these were true gentlemen who treated everybody with respect, and especially including women and children, but everybody. Good, good question. Yes, ma'am. You said they they didn't get support from Lexington. Some of some of the, the troops they had to go said to retreat. Right. right. Did they drive ride the horse all the way there to S and all the way back to town? Right. Fast horses and trading horses, so it's like the Pony Express. So right, there was no telegraph, so they had to uh, to ride very fast. But that's what happened, and uh, they got back. The uh, he attempted. He didn't know how long. Uh, thought maybe he could keep Kirby Smith at Fort Mitchell if he could get General Marshall to come over from Eastern Kentucky. So he sent a fast courier over to General Marshall, but General Marshall was too far away of the Marshall. And when that fell through, then he decided to instead order uh, General Heath to withdraw. So yes, that's in the official record. That's in the primary documents published by Congress, official record of the Civil War. That correspondence is there. Good. Do you know anything about the 13th Kentucky uh, uh, Cavalry? 13th Kentucky Cavalry? Formed in Columbia. Formed in Columbia, Kentucky. Union Army. I'd have to, I, yeah, I'd have to look it up. I know something about the 15th, but the 13th, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. My great-grandfather was in it. Great. He was, he was separated at uh, Camp Nelson, and he walked back to Adair County. It took him two months, <laughs> starting in January. <laughs> <laughs> I had ancestors fought on both sides. Uh, some were with Morgan in the Christmas raid, which I didn't know until I wrote the book, and... Uh, some of the sons of Confederate veterans told me, and uh, some fought on the Union side. So I, I'm from Duke, and I had ancestors on both sides. Good. Any others? All right. Great questions. Thank you.